Welcome all to Pharmacology Further podcast. This is the e-newsletter of January 24. So hope you had a great start of the year and I wish you all the best for all the success and the accomplishments throughout the upcoming year. May you look forward into a wonderful year and may you enter into a beautifully embellished year for yourself and your near and dear ones. So let's get started with the first section of Pharmacology Further podcast and it comprises of is pharmacology difficult in this section the first one we have are the january fda approved drugs burda zimir sodium the brand name being zel Sivmai, was approved on january 5 2024 for the treatment of molluscum contagiosum the dosage form adopted for this particular drug it is applied as a topical gel it is a nitric oxide releasing agent that is the mechanism secondly we have dupilumab and the brand name being dupic scent it was approved on january 25 2024 as the only drug for the treatment of children one year and older suffering from eosinophilic esophagitis. Gemagard liquid of Takeda was approved on January 29-24 for the adults suffering from chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy that is abbreviated as capital CIDP. Well, we don't have much enough information amongst the January FDA approved drugs. That's all about. I'm going to wind up this section in the three drugs. Next, let's move on to the latest medical updates, the sources being the best internet, websites, news and etc. So first and foremost, we have numerous non-hereditary gene mutations. They are responsible for the development of capital EGFR positive lung cancer. Chemotherapy always stayed the mainstay treatment therapy. But now, Morbocertinib, it was marketed in around 2021 and it dominantly was adopted as a treatment for this particular disease. But its failure in phase 3 trial to reach the end point, confirmatory results and its failure in the progressive free survival rates forced the manufacturing company to withdraw the drug and cause a lot of limited therapy options to the patient suffering from capital EGFR positive lung cancer. Second important update I have for you all is migraine attacks for long time can increase the risk of development of inflammatory bowel disease that is capital IBD as researched by a medicine college in Seoul, South Korea. Next, let's get to know about something very interesting. There is a special mechanism involving cochlear zinc in an induction of noise induced hearing loss that is also abbreviated as capital NIHL. Studies in mice reveal derangement of the zinc levels caused by loud noise which ultimately lead to hearing damage at the cellular level. Next update I'm going to tell you is all about the metabolic syndrome. The metabolic syndrome is is an emerging current problem in the western countries. It can be cured and helped up to a certain level with special Atlantic diet. Now what is this Atlantic diet? It is made of minimally processed local and fresh food products. That's very healthy, good, interesting update for all of us. Next, let's get to know something very interesting more. Researchers on the mice from the Cold Spring Harbor University, it has shown great potentials in the capital T cells related to the longevity and healthy living. The capital T cells eliminated certain cells in mice and the mice lived a healthy life free from obesity and diabetes. So that is also a kind of a research which shows great potentials to be adopted in humans also. Next, let's get to know about something very new. Current studies from Canada reveal the beneficial use of magnet-guided micro-robots in the capital MRI device to treat the liver tumors. Next, researchers from University of California reveal that the fluid-filled cushion sac Around the lungs, it not only serves a protective covering but also treasures the flu fighting macrophages. So, isn't it wonderful to know that the lung cushion covering is not only about the protection but it also has virus fighting properties? Next, researchers from the Netherlands Cancer Institute they have developed an improved and novel stool test to diagnose the colon cancer earlier than the sinus symptoms show off. 
So colon cancer is a very big problem, especially in the Western countries. So once such kind of laboratory tests they are available, it would be very beneficial for the patients to get know about their condition before the grave situation actually arises. Next, current studies reveal the positive impact of capital GLP-1 agonist drugs use and lower risk of the anxiety and depression. Drugs like terzapatide and semaglutide. These are actually lowering down the risk of anxiety and depression. They are the GLP-1 agonist drugs, which are used as anti-diabetic drugs. That's all in the latest research and update section. Next, let's move on to the from my classroom section. Now, what is from my classroom? Since you are, if you are new to this podcast, you should know. Here, I will be sharing some insights of pharmacology learnings from the classes I have taken this month or all that I have read in the subject. My own reading topics comprises of tamsulosine drug and its current status. I'm sure you might have heard about tamsulosine drug. Now, you all might have heard about the condition of prostatic enlargement, better known as in medical terms as benign prostatic hyperplasia, that is capital BPH. This generally occurs in old age. The drainage of urine is adversely affected from the bladder. Now, how does tamsulosine help in this particular condition? It relaxes the muscles of the prostate and the urination is improved. But there are certain points you need to know about this drug. The disease progression is not improved. The prostate continues to enlarge. So, what is the endpoint treatment? The endpoint treatment is definitely surgery. What about tamsulosine? More we need to know. It is available as a capsule and as only a prescription drug. It is not an over-the-counter drug. The mechanism involves blocking of the alpha-1A receptors and it is quite very specific for alpha-1A receptors in the prostate and the relaxing the muscles. It helps by blocking the alpha-1A receptors and relaxing the muscles of the prostate. Then we should know about the common side effects also. The common side effects of tamsulosine include dizziness, lightheadedness, nausea, diarrhea, blurred vision and painful erection. So that is quite a rare condition but it may happen sometimes. Well, that was all in the Is Pharmacology Difficult section. Next to the major section, we move on to Ratchet Wills. From the Ratchet Wills writing this, what all do I need to tell you? I just recently released my 15th book. Is Pharmacology Difficult Book 1 General Pharmacology 2nd Edition? Coincidentally, the first book of mine was the first edition and meanwhile, I gained an experience of 13 books in the mid part and then the product turned out to be the 2nd edition of the same book. So what do you do? What do you do expect? Definitely it's an improved version. And next I think of working on my upcoming project and that is known as the Demeter's Diary. That is a YA fiction story book. Let's move on next to the third major section that is simple and sparkling. Now today we're gonna peel off the onions. What does that mean? I'm gonna tell you about the onions today. I know many of us like onions and many of us do not like them at all. So what is so special about onions? Now onions, the Latin name is Allium sepa, is a plant which grows in the ground. The bulb is used for the food purpose. Cooking onions is easy and hassle free. Onion contains many useful compounds like sulfur and that helps in reduction of the swelling, inflammation, blood cholesterol and also blood sugar. Anti-cancer, antioxidant properties are also found in onions. Sometimes there may be instances of eye irritation, allergy, etc. If one applies onion extract on the skin, that is generally applied for the healing of the bruises, wounds, etc. Then that may sometimes trigger side effects like eczema, allergy, etc. Now, what do we need to know about the drug interactions? Now, aspirin administered concomitantly with the onion, it may induce allergy or increase the sensitivity to the onion. And when the onions, they are used with anti-diabetic drugs, blood sugar may lower down to a significant amount. When they are used with anticoagulants, healing may slow down. When they are given with a drug metabolized by CYP2E1 in the liver, their metabolism may be slowed down, increasing the side effects of the drugs 
whose metabolism is slowed down. It may sometimes lead to toxicity of the other drug also. What else we need to know about anions? Their common side effects they include aggravation of the irritable bowel syndrome. It may cause heartburn. It may sometimes rarely cause migraine and generally it leads to bad breath. And that is one of the major reasons many people do avoid eating onions because of the bad breath. That was all in simple and sparkling section. Next, let's move on to off the cuff talks. Well, I have very interesting topic for all of you in off the cuff talks. Today we're going to talk about about the pros and cons of connecting on the social media groups. Let's talk about these things. It is so important, so much in vogue and so much in trend. In avid table is what I call the social media groups where you connect with a certain group which have few common traits like it can be your school group it can be your graduation group it can be your online class group etc there are many pros and cons of connecting with like minded people on a group now before we talk about the pros and cons first you check your relevance aptly to join the group if it's not relevant better leave the group once you are convinced about the reason to join the group definitely there are a bag of mixed emotions dwindling in the mind with different kind of posts It is a true test of your patience and endurance like every relationship demands something similarly the continuity in the group is a true test of tolerance it has happened many a times and i have noticed too that for one amicable post you have to bear with and delete around 50 unwanted and undesirable posts in one week's time Now one needs to master the art of staying in the social media groups. Undoubtedly the groups are a great platform to connect and socially chat. You stay informed, you stay updated and you stay connected. It does differ in comfort zone in different types of groups. It is much more comfort in the family groups and there is much less comfort in the schools and graduation groups. Now why it is like that? Because everybody has had their shares of sorrows and joys as far as the school and graduation memories are concerned. It is sometimes highly irritable to look at the photographs of people whom you felt always disconnected with. People who bullied you, who pulled your legs during the school or graduation times. But then, where does the growing up and the maturity at your end guides you? It preaches you silently to ignore and collect the good vibes only. You deserve the best in life and the most beautiful things in life. A handful of people should not be empowered enough to modify or reshape your happy moods and days. Still I would say moods are moods. The cons get darker with impatience and intolerance. When no good reason to stay is served, the final exit is the solution. Well, before doing that, you can adopt a few tips that I will give you that will definitely help in these situations to save your time, happiness and peace all at your corner. The first and the foremost way is to mute the group. Secondly, you can mute and archive the groups. Check the messages once a week at your most insensitive time. The time when you are least concerned about anyone. when you are mentally fit and strong to bear and tolerate anything and everything always remember staying connected is an art and one needs to learn it the hard way and surely to survive in the virtual world of social media one needs to learn to demarcate the fake and the real the pomp and show and the reality and ignore and appreciate the required things all in all one should learn the art of staying connected Well that's a wrap up time for this month of January. Hope all had a wonderful year start and looking forward to accomplish the most out of the year ahead. With all the best wishes, I would just say don't forget to subscribe to this podcast, especially on the Substack we are there and also subscribe to the Pharmacology Further podcast that is a kind of a e-newsletter in the audio form. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.